We have gone through a bunch of portable solar panels for use with our solar generators. We use them often between our blackouts during fire season and our camping trips, and I've struggled to find any that I've really been happy with. I'm going to go over some of the common pitfalls of these devices and how they have come up short in our setup, as well as show you a new product that I think is worthy of your consideration if you want to invest in a system of your own. Though I've owned a bunch of these, for the purposes of this video I'll be focusing only on products that I really did like even if they had major shortcomings. The first style of portable panel is the rigid, difficult to move solar panel which is based upon a beefed up residential panel that folds into a suitcase. At 25 pounds, these heavy, awkward devices have excellent output and are very sturdy but a pain to deal with. My favorite of the bunch, this Renogy 100 watt panel, delivered everything promised but at the end of the day just wasn't easy to deal with and I could just use a normal standard panel in its place that I would toss in the garage when I wasn't using it. I never wanted to take these camping due to how unwieldy they are and how difficult they are to get into the car and I just cannot find a reason to keep using them. The second style is the lighter semi-rigid fold-up panel such as this 100 watt rock pals. It was my previous pick. This panel at only 10 pounds is much easier to maneuver and is a good panel but it goes too far to the other extreme. It flops around on two wobbly legs and falls over in the slightest breeze. I also do not like the gimmicky adapters and the USB ports that it comes with. It all ends up feeling cheap and diminishes the water resistance for features that nobody will ever really use. The Renogy and Rockpals are my favorites of their respective categories, but both have major shortcomings and are only 100 watts apiece. Whereas the SP200 from Bluetti provides 200 watts and is nearly as robust as the rigid panel with all the convenience of the fold-up. Weighing in at only 14 pounds, it weighs drastically less than the other panels watt for watt while still being rigid with a much larger, sturdier leg base. It also has four legs, one per panel, and each are held in with elastic bands to keep everything standing strong. The SB200 is also free of the junky USB ports that just invite water problems. It's a single water resistant piece that has a long high quality high gauge cable and standard MC4 connectors. It snaps shut nicely using a clasp, and best of all, the SP200 utilizes the industry leading sun power cells. They have, in my testing, given me more power early and late in the day out of peak power than even the rigid panels that I use. When looking at price, there isn't a massive difference. I'm including the Jackery 200 watt panel in this comparison because they are well known, but I personally didn't like the hard plastic clamshell design they used and so I don't even consider them in my setups. If you don't mind the form factor and the price premium, they are not bad panels. The Jackery and Blue Eddy have the major advantage of being higher wattage. They require half as many cables and allow for a much lighter and neater setup. The Jackery does cost an additional $150-ish dollars compared to the rest, and I do not believe it to be worth that premium by any stretch of the imagination. The Blue Eddy, Rock Pals, and Renogy are all in the same ballpark depending on whatever sales are going on when you watch this video. All the products mentioned have a similar warranty and all of the companies are well regarded for customer support. So for my setup, the SP200 just blows everything out of the water. It's fairly priced lighter and sturdier than the competition, and has no gimmicks or lame adapters. It is nearly as robust as the much heavier panels and is a happy medium panel that I have found. If you are interested in any of these products, I'll include links below, as well as a link to my video on my current blackout preparation kit, which is now utilizing the SP200. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing.